we stand? Thank you for coming to this time of worship and also a time of celebrating Nancy, Carolyn, Wallace, Thompson, Granny, celebrating her life. We've all been traveling down memory lane as you've been thinking about her life and how her life has positively affected all of you, especially the family, the extended family and friends, and you'll continue to, to remember the good things that Nancy has done over her lifetime, as long as you live. Would you join me as we pray and ask the Lord's blessings upon us? Heavenly Father, we're thankful and grateful that you are here, that you gathered with us. As we assemble in this chapel, we come recognizing our human frailty and our weakness and our need for you. It's true that without you, we can do nothing, but with you, all things are possible. So we pray that healing would take place, encouragement, strength. All that we need and more would be received today. And we pray that you'll help us as we pause to remember Nancy. And all that you do for us now and in the moments to come, we'll certainly thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Does it look like in heaven? Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? Does the sun shine bright forever? Have your fears and your pain gone away? Cause here on earth it feels like everything Tell me 
so important and we realize it even more during times like these the word gives us strength and it affirms our faith and it helps us understand that even though tough things are happening it's going to be all right through Jesus Christ the family has selected some passages Psalm 23 very familiar the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will lift mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. In John's writing, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? In John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And John had the great privilege on the Isle of Patmos to had the curtains rolled back, and he had a glimpse of all the splendor and beauty and grandeur of heaven. And he began to write, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. 
And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. It sounds like a place that you'd like to go and not just visit, but you'd like to go and spend eternity. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more death, no more stress and strain. All the former things are passed away. That's what we have to look forward to if we're in Jesus Christ. That's where Nancy's at. And if you love Nancy and want to see Nancy again, it, you won't get to see her just because you're buying your Bible. It's more than that. You must be born again. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So I would encourage you to give your life to Jesus if you don't know him. So you can begin the journey from earth to glory now. And you'll get to see Granny again, and Mama again, uh, and your sister, and your friend. A song that Nancy loved, uh, The Lighthouse.
for Jesus is the lighthouse, and from the rocks of sin he has shown the light around me that I could clearly see. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me where would this ship be? If it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me where would this ship be? Praise God. Nancy had some knocks and some rough waves that she went through in life, but that lighthouse guided her, Jesus, safely into the shore. Praise God. Work, pastime, shopping, family, and faith are words that have meaning as you relate them to the life of the woman that we have learned to admire and appreciate over the years. Today we'll pause just for a short, short while and we'll celebrate the contribution that Nancy has made to her family, friends, and community. Nancy was raised in a generation that believed in a strong work ethic. If you didn't work, something was wrong with you because everybody worked. I still believe that. I know there's some folks around here that maybe don't believe it. And there's... <laughs> Nancy believed it. Well, Nancy worked at many places over her lifetime, but her longest place of employment, which was for 26 years, was Mariah Parham Hospital, or Mariah Parham Medical Center, or Mariah Parham Health. It's gone through an evolution of names, so she ought to be receiving, she should have been receiving three checks. Uh, <laughs> she started out in the OGBYN department, moving on to the emergency room as a ward clerk. Needless to say, that area of the hospital is very busy. A lot of demand, you never know what to expect, high emotions that create chaos and tragedy. Joyce Dickerson, who had worked with Nancy, stated on the funeral home website, and I quote, Nancy was a great nurse who cared so much for her patients and wanted her patients to be comfortable, end of quote. Yet she was part of a generation of older hospital employees that did provide excellent care, personal attention, and old-fashioned TLC. That's what Nancy provided. Nancy had such great rapport with other personnel that they were more like a family instead of just fellow employees. Yes, she enjoyed her work and provided the best and most excellent care both personally and professionally. As long, and as long as she's been retired, I was amazed with this and I have been amazed over the years, there are still employees, still those that are left, that remember Nancy Thompson. They'll ask me from time to time, how's Nancy doing? Um, you know, a lot of times when you work at a place, you can go back in six months and they want to know, who are you? <laughs> but they remembered Nancy. Her pastime activities varied from anything like ceramics, crocheting, quilting, jigsaw puzzles, adult coloring, size coloring books, and bus tours. Ceramics, crocheting, and quilting were all a part of her younger years when her eyesight was better and her hands were steady. I understand she did some good amateur work but it wasn't just about the finished product. It was about a pastime that could, could and would get her mind off the stress and strain of a very demanding profession, and it sure did accomplish that for her. Jigsaw puzzles and adult-sized coloring books came along in her adult life before she retired, and this was a little less tedious and demanding that brought the same relief from the everyday rat race that we find ourselves in and it also helped her in that regard. Then after retirement, when it was just about having fun, she enjoyed bus tours. This is no surprise to me because Nancy enjoyed being around people. 
the talking, the telling funny stories, having some laughs, and connecting with people on a personal basis. All of that attracted Nancy. Then on top of that, to be able to see up close and personal attractions, entertainment, famous people, enjoy some good food and different kinds of food, and then settle down for a good night's sleep. Yes, her pastimes, which extends to our understanding, like activity, amusement, hobby, leisure, and entertainment, all helps us understand that Nancy was a well-rounded person with many, many interests. I read the stock market report on Dollar Tree that their stocks went down substantially after the reporting of the death of Nancy Thompson. <laughs> now, now, you know I'm just kidding. But there could be some truth to that because she was one of the most loyal customers that Dollar Tree had and other stores like Dollar Tree. She really enjoyed going and spending her money there because she could get a whole lot for just a little bit of money. Nancy bought it, whether she needed it or not, because it was on sale or such a good bargain. And listen, you know people all the time say, well, I've I saved money. Now, it's still in the closet with the stickers on it, but I saved all this money. Another place she enjoyed going and spending a day shopping was a thrift store. Needing it was never a reason to buy it. Just wanting it or liking how it looked would be reason enough to put it in the buggy and take off with a car full of everything under the sun. And then there was a challenge of finding enough room to store it in the house. What eventually happened was the space between the product and where you could walk got smaller and smaller. And then what happened is what they call hoarding. So the family went with her and she would put a couple items in the buggy and then take several items out. When back home, they slowly cleaned out the items that she didn't need to make room for people and less for product. But what all this did was entertain Nancy and also reveal to the family that Nancy was having some problems that needed attention and early stages of Alzheimer's were setting in. Nancy loved her family and they certainly did love her. Her husband, Roy, a truck driver, preceded her in death, and she dearly loved him. Also preceding her in death was two sons, Randy and Scott Thompson, that just broke her heart, and they were in her heart until she drew her last breath. Two daughters, Rhonda and Susie, that are to be commended for the care you've given to your mother as you've watched her gradually decline. It was amazing how this woman, as she declined, lost her ability to recognize her family, but never lost her awareness of Randy and Scott, her late husband, Roy, and love for children. Something drew her to children where she wanted to touch them, to talk to them, and embrace them. In her sickness, Nancy had a real love for animals. And those animals became very protective of uh, Nancy. Now, I never tested them, but there was at least one or two that I believe would take a hunk out of you. <laughs> and I didn't want to uh, find out for sure. I didn't want to be the victim, so I, I gave them their space. Because dogs really like preachers anyway, because they know they eat a lot of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Now she, and she never had that love for animals like she did in her sickness. The crazy thing is the two people that cared for her the most, she never even mentioned or asked about. And that was what crazy. <laughs> Susie, your entire family pitched in and took care of your mother. Everybody had a role. And if they needed help in knowing what to do, you would always fill them in on what you wanted done to make sure the job got finished. So let me pause for a moment and thank you all personally for looking after your mother. You did an outstanding job on looking after her. Um, I mean, you just, you went beyond, over and beyond the call of duty. And it's no wonder that all of you were willing to take care of her. 
because she had done so much for you over the years. Um, for example, when Caleb was born and Susan and Dennis had to move to Durham, Nancy always came to the hospital, even when the hospital stay turned into six months. When others gave up that he would make it, sometimes even she had doubts. She still supported their decisions. Not all people can support someone when the options are different, but she could. She stood by you, and that meant a great deal, and you more than paid the debt by taking care of her. And all of you remember um, that great barbecue chicken that she made, and she made her own barbecue sauce. And she also made the best homemade banana ice cream under the sun. And I hate to even mention it because it makes me want to have some banana ice cream right now. Rhonda, David, and family, and Susie, and Dennis, and family, God bless you for honoring the life of Nancy Thompson and helping her maintain her dignity. Sisters Eve and Linda, you both have your own personal memories and reflections of life with Nancy, and I hope you'll allow that to build you up and make it through this time of transition. Eight grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. You all were loved greatly by your granny. And please let your love continue on even in her physical absence and live in such a way that you will positively affect the lives of others and be a shining light in a dark world. You are her legacy. So live out her values, live out her morals, her principles. So people will see Nancy in you. Nancy Thompson Woody said on the website, and I quote, I have known Nancy since I was a little girl. She was one of the sweetest people I have ever known, end of quote. You're her legacy. I hope people in the days to come will say, you are one of the sweetest men or women that I know. And you'll, you can say, Nancy Thompson was my granny. No wonder they see her life lived out in you. Nancy had a strong and abiding faith, being a member of the South Henderson Pentecostal Holiness Church, being active when her health was good, and not being ashamed to share her testimony and faith in Jesus Christ. People she came in contact with, she had no problem sharing her faith. Nancy valued prayer, enjoyed Sunday school, wasn't ashamed to worship the Lord with her hands raised and a vocal hallelujah offered to her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have no doubt that Nancy is in heaven. And when she drew her last breath, she arrived in that celestial city where there's no more sorrow, no more pain, no more death, and the former things have passed away. Yes, that's where she's at. And the good news is you can go be with her. And the way to do it is through Jesus Christ. It, it seems strange that when Nancy died, the dogs that had been barking so much became quiet. They just took their places on the bed or in the room, but never barked or made a fuss. When the nurse came, the same reaction. When the funeral home personnel came, the same response. We know dogs have a special sense, but was that it? Or had they heard or seen the angels? when they came to retrieve Nancy from her bed to take her to her heavenly home. And were those dogs acting like the animals in the stable? Glory to God in the highest. I don't know other than they had a different reaction than before her death. Anyway, she's there now waiting on us to be ready when our time of death and departure comes. The Bible says, be you also ready for in such a time as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Rest assured, Jesus is coming. That's a fact. The real question, will you be ready? If not, I pray that you will. I've already made my reservations. I'm going to heaven when I die, and I'm going to see Nancy, and I have a host of other people that I plan on seeing. And Rhonda, I know you've made preparations. Sue, you all made preparations. 
and you're ready also whenever that time comes. But if you haven't done it, I can't tell you enough. If you have not done it, please make sure that you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. A couple of the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren have some thoughts that they want to share with you, and they know the order they're coming in. They're going to come at this time. And if the second one would like to come and just take a seat here, and the third one can take a seat there, you'll be ready. There you go. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Um, those who don't know me, my name's Alexis Thompson. Um, Nancy was my great-grandmother. This is one of the top five hardest things I believe I've ever done. For the past couple of days, I just keep going back and forth in my mind, wondering if this is really happening and how do I speak about the woman, my grandmother, that impacted my life and many others so greatly. I know if she were here today, she would be so honored, so joyful by all the love that's filling this room today in celebration of her life. Granny Thompson was the most selfless, funny, kind-hearted, and most Christian woman I have ever known. She was always doing what was best for others, even if it meant putting herself second. For example, her putting flowers on someone's grave, even if it was a stranger, she said, let's go down to the graveyard, feeding a stray dog scraps, or even saying a little prayer for someone in need. I spent every summer with my grandmother from the time I moved to Virginia at seven to my early years of college at the age of 20. In those years, I finally remember her always trying to make it the best summer for me. 89 cent hamburgers at McDonald's, Sunday church services followed by Golden Skillet, Pac-Man or playing Monjon on the old computer, her taking me to Rose Hardy to have a pink dress with green frogs made for me and giving me much needed hugs that most likely saved my life and so much more. Granny impacted my life by her kindness and her ability to love people so deeply and strongly until we meet again in heaven. Hi everyone, um, my name is Cricket Morgan if you do not know me. Um, I don't have anything planned, a uh, speech or nothing, but um, I did want to say a couple things. Um, Granny was the kindest person I have ever met. Me and my mom would go on different dance competitions that I had, and no matter how old Granny was, we always had a lot of fun. Um, I do remember sometimes I would be very nervous and up on stage, but. I would see Granny over there looking around, like, what's going on? And then Mom would point, and she would start cheering for me. I also remember the different times of us going into different hotel rooms. And, oh, she was such a messy eater. I would always tell her, I'm like, Granny, please don't spill nothing on my side of the bed. And she said, Cricket, I, I didn't spill nothing. I cleaned it up. So I put her plate down. I go to sit down, and rice flies everywhere. I mean, all in my face, in my shirt. <sighs> but yeah, so. Well, I love you, Granny. I'm Haley. Um, I would always go and stay with Granny, and she was there whenever you needed her. From the time I was little, I would stay with her at her older house, and when she lived with Rhonda. <sighs> She's gonna be missed greatly. So over the past few years, Granny became more and more confused and 
she slowly started to lose her memories and her abilities. And as we know, they call it the slow goodbye because you have to witness the mind leaving before the body. And it was hard, it was hard for all of us to watch and see her decline through her stages of dementia. But I'm very proud first of how my mom and dad and my Aunt Rhonda and how everyone stepped in to take care of her. So although at the end she may not have been able to fully understand and grasp at all that you did for her, we all saw and appreciate the care that you all gave her, even though we knew how painful it was for you to watch. So thank you for making her last days as comfortable as possible. But when we remember her, we know her as so much more than her last year of life. Granny was a lot of things to many people. She was kind, welcoming, funny, clumsy, trusting, and hospitable to those she knew and to strangers. She was a daughter, mother, sister, wife, aunt, grandmother, and friend. Whichever role that she held for anyone, she did it to the best of her ability. And for me, she was my granny, as we called her. And as one of her grandchildren, I can sh say that she showed us love, affection, care, and acceptance. We knew her love as young kids when she would take a car full of us when we were not yet even teenagers on vacations to the beach and would corral us to the 99 cent store to get a souvenir. Growing up, kids wanted to go to Granny's house to spend the night to eat or to eat whatever sweet treat she had made that day. And my favorite was always her peanut butter delight. In high school on Sundays, I would get dressed up and go to church with her, and always we would get lunch afterwards and just have a special morning together with just the two of us. And sometimes Eve would join in as well since they were church buddies before me and then after I left, but I looked forward to these Sundays because I knew I was headed off to college in the real world shortly after that, and it was our chance to form a bond before I left town. So I hope she knows how much those times meant to me back then. I know all her grand and great grandkids had a way that they enjoyed their time with Granny. Whether it was going to church or trying to teach her how to use FaceTime and Facebook, staying up late watching scary movies, getting vanilla cones from McDonald's, walking down the path or going across the yard to visit her, hanging out with her at Rhonda's house, having her as your neighbor, visiting her once she moved into Mom's house, Caleb holding her hand while he watched Barney, going through photos to hear about her ancestry, and of course, everyone coming from across North Carolina or Virginia to her house for Thanksgiving and Christmas, which she loved to host back when she was able to do so. She was special to all of us. I know Justin and Heather are happy that she was able to build relationships with their partners, Brittany and Josh. And although her memory was already fading, I know Amanda, Alexis, Tanya, and I feel lucky that we were able to introduce her to Kanishka, Austin, Rodney, and Chris to her as they entered our lives the past few years. And even though near the end she didn't remember who they or even who we were, when we would walk into the room, she would pretend that she did and exclaim, oh, hey, Shug, it's good to see you. Because <laughs> that's just what she did. She may not have remembered who you were, but she didn't want to hurt your feelings, so she would pretend like she did. So we had our slow goodbye with Granny, and we saw her slip away, but I'm still grateful that we actually got a goodbye. And she was still feisty all the way to the end, when Dad asked her if she had anything to say to her kids and grandkids, one last time she said, yeah, just shut your mouth. <laughs> and that was, that was Granny peeking through her dementia curtain one final time. We loved her for different lengths of time and different ways and capacities with our own variety of relationships with ups and downs. But one thing was true for us all. We all loved her dearly, and we loved having her as our Granny. She was great to all of her grandkids. So Granny, we love you, and we already miss you. Rest easy. Thank you. I always think it's good to hear from family. Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, my name is Johnny Dickerson. I live on the Vicksburg Road. Uh, Mrs. Thompson was a loving lady, and she loved her husband. I can say, I picked up Mr. Thompson one day to go to Rocky Mount to the stockyard, and and it's been over 30 years ago, and I still can hear her voice. She asked him, "Say, 
Do you know him good enough to ride all the way to Rocky Mount and back with him? He, he said, yes, I, I know him real well. So, uh, you know, I can say she loved her family and she loved her husband. She did love her husband because she asked him. She said, do you, do you know him well enough to ride all the way to Rocky Mountain and back with him? And, and it's been over 30 years ago, and, and that's the very words I still remember. You know, so, so that's saying something, you know, you know, and I just had to say something. Thank you, thank you. One of the things I think about uh, in, in closing is one word, heart. Nancy has such a big heart. And she expressed that heart through actions and love, and all of you have benefited from that. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for a life well lived. Thank you for Nancy and all that she has meant to each of us and so many more people. Thank you for the strength you've been giving to the family throughout this time of Nancy's declining health and death. And thank you for what you will do in the future to give them strength as they make it through this time of transition. It's great, a great challenge for them, but they'll make it through it with the help of the Lord and the help of each other. Lord, we ask now that you'll take us to the cemetery safely, and we will bless you and praise you for the wonderful things you keep doing in all of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There's much to do here before you.